So this is the Whole Man Academy podcast. My guest today is Dan Davies, father, husband, football lover, golf enthusiast, writer, author, editor, uh, and incidentally, Mr. Porter, editorial director, if I've got that correct, um, which we're going to talk primarily about, but we might also touch on a bit of footy as well, which uh, is, is uh, obvious things. We're both big Liverpool supporters. Uh, so Dan, first of all, how are you and where are you? Uh, I'm very good, thank you, Anthony. I am in the Mr. Porter offices at the top of Westfield in West London. Uh, it's a nice sunny day. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm good, thanks. How about you? Yeah, same here. I'm, I'm uh, this weekend off, to, off on holiday, so uh, the, the crazy house of trying to pack everything up. But it's nice to know I'm going to have a couple of weeks of, um, of have, having a break. Where which, are you off to? Uh, off to uh, Corfu, which is slightly oh, warmer than here. Um, but it's one of the things we're going to talk about today is, you know, to state the obvious, the six months effect of COVID on everybody stopped a lot of people having holidays. Um, have you managed to get away at all? No, I mean, we, we spent lockdown. I mean, we were away for four months during lockdown. My wife, um, I went to work at my previous job. I joined um, Mr. Porter at the end of April. So during lockdown. Um, I was still at my previous job at the time and the world was starting to go mad that week. Um, I went into work um, having been at the, the last Liverpool match uh, with a crowd against Atletico Madrid. Yes. Uh, the infamous game, not only where Liverpool lost, but um, was held up as sort of one of those uh, events that probably shouldn't have happened. Anyway, I was back in London on that Monday. The world was going mad. Uh, the office was closed down. We were sent home. By the time I got home, my wife had packed the car and said, we're going to Cornwall, um, which is where my mum and dad live. Right, And they, they we're very fortunate in the sense that they've got a, a little garden flat at the bottom of their house, which they normally rent out to holiday makers. Uh, we moved in there thinking it would be for a couple of weeks. It was four months. So we had four months beside the sea in Cornwall, which, which you know, while it had its challenges, it felt like a holiday. So I, I feel like I've had my holiday this year. Yeah, at least you got away. And it's, um, it's a change of scenery, I think, is, is one of the big things. I know we, we had our Whole Man Academy Zoom call on... Uh, on Wednesday night, and I mean, I wrote about it in the e-letter, but what a lot of guys said was, it doesn't matter where you live, you just got bored of missing interaction of going out and, you know, having time away from, and it doesn't mean your family's bad, but just having time away, speaking to other people, and, and you get energy from other people, and ideas yeah, that learn. Absolutely, I mean, I think for doing what I do, you know, as editorial director, um, so much of my job is about quick conversations with people, you know, sort of quick creative, conversations, trying to come up with a solution to something, you know, checking a headline, you know, brainstorming a sort of intro to a piece. And it's so difficult to do when you're, when you're dislocated from people. Yeah. And I think everybody's found that. And um, certainly, you know, I, I finished my previous job and started my new job, both in lockdown. And it was tough. I mean, it was tough for everybody. I think that, you know, what, something that I really felt was the sort of Zoom and WebEx fatigue, you know, um, not only was it a question of, of, of coming into a big and complex business, um, but also trying to, you know, get to know my new colleagues. I have a sort of team of 13 or 14 um, who I'd never met, apart from a couple of people. So that had a lot of challenges to it. But by the same token, it was great to be able to have breakfast, lunch and tea with my kids. Uh, I've got three kids who are um, eight, six and two. Uh, so that was really, really nice. But like you say, that the, the proximity of, of work and home, you know, when they are in the same place and they're in the same place yeah. every day, you know, I think that little bit of separation um, is important. I mean, I used to, to rail against being on the central line uh, during rush hour and used to sort of take a series of photographs from my Instagram feed of me sort of in the scrub of humanity trying to get into <laughs> the circus. Um, and, you know, it's strange to think that those scenes have gone you know yeah. i'm not saying it's a bad thing but you know in the space of a, sh a few short months the world really has has changed so it's been great coming coming into the office at mr porter and seeing my colleagues and sort of gradually trying to get back to something approaching normality yeah because certainly in terms of what we do the sort of creative output that we're responsible for you know so much of that is is based on and geared on you know, interaction with people face to face, you know, those sort of chats and, you know, quick conversations. Yeah, it's those, that's one of the big things we mentioned the other night was the, 
you either learn from people when you're in the office with them, you know, it might be a quick chat and, or a, you know, water cooler moment or grab a coffee together and not saying we have to schedule a zoom call to jump on. Um, and, and we spoke a lot about zoom fatigue, which I think is, uh, it, you know, is, is affecting a lot of people at the moment when you're just sitting in front of a screen and there's the blurred line between blurred lines between you don't get that sense of, coming through the door, I'm home and I've done a good day's work because for a lot of people it was, I'm home and I've been here all day and now I've yeah. just switched my computer off and I'm sitting on the sofa. Um, so the, a, a lot of changes coming. And I think I said it the other day, it was adapt or die for a lot of companies, uh, the, having a, a good online presence. And, and we're going to jump into obviously with Mr. Porter, which firstly has a huge online presence. Um, but for the people that don't know, what is Mr. Porter? And also we're going to move on to the, the health of mind, but what is Mr. Porter? Well, Mr. Porter is, um, we like to think, the world's leading men's style and lifestyle destination. Uh, we stock upwards of 600 um, menswear brands. Um, and we also, you know, for the last nine, nearly 10 years, we celebrate our 10th birthday next year, um, have had this wonderful mix of um, style and lifestyle. So the journal, which is the editorial arm of Mr. Porter, is the sort of the magazine uh, content around men's style, around men's lifestyle, and now um, around men's sort of mental health and wellness as well. Since um, it, we launched in July 2019, the Mr. Porter Health in Mind um, initiative, which is a mixture of content and fundraising, uh, which is designed to um, help men live happier, healthier, more fulfilling lives. Um, we have a very close bond with our community, our readership, our customers. Um, and this was really reinforced during lockdown. We pivoted to what we call Mr. Porter at Home, which was all content really geared around the reality that we were all living through. Um, and it was much less about the sort of the, the normal output of style advice and grooming and culture stories and, and stylish, you know, content yeah. around stylish living. It was really about helping and serving our community and, and listening to to our community and producing content that really um, reflected the sort of unprecedented times we were all all experiencing and, and continue to experience. Well, you said something there about, um, you know, the initiative helping men lead healthier and happier lives, which I think is, you know, primarily what the Whole Man Academy is trying to do as well on, on a much smaller scale, <laughs> to state the obvious. But the other word there was for fulfilling lives. Um, and, and I... That, that's always one that people miss because they're like, yeah, I should be healthy and I should be happy. But actually being fulfilled is quite frankly priceless because if you're unfulfilled, it doesn't really matter how much money you've got in the bank, how you look, how you dress, et cetera, et cetera. You know, that, that's a feeling that is priceless. So how would you say with Mr. Porter that they're, they're moving away from just being an online store, which I guess a lot of companies are, to, to that ability to actually reach guys and say, look, it, you know, it isn't just about how you look, it's about how you're feeling and being fulfilled. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've always been a, a mixture of, of magazine and storefront. That's been the sort of unique proposition that, that Mr. Porter, you know, has um, and has, you know, since, since the very beginning. But, yeah. you know, we, we're, really, um, we're really interested in the idea that it's not just what you look like, you say, not what, just you look, what you look like on the outside, it's how you're feeling on the inside. And, um, you know, happier, more fulfilling lives. Yes, we can we can exercise, yes, we can, um, you know, we can put in place strategies, but, you know, happiness is an elusive, um, an elusive and intangible um, commodity at many times. And my kids always, you know, I say to them, they say, oh, you know, what do you think I should be, daddy? You know, I always say, well, just be happy. You know, that's what I, that's what I want for my children more than anything else. Yeah. And if I had the, the recipe, the magic recipe for that or the formula for it, then not only would I be drinking it by the, um, by the sort of bottle load, but I'd also be giving it to my kids for breakfast, lunch, and tea every day. Yeah, I think that's a huge one at the moment with, you know, we, we always say through the Whole Man Academy, we're not here to sugarcoat things. And with the furlough scheme ending later in the year, or, you know, soon to be, and a lot of people uh, may be struggling financially, um, which often for guys leads to, you know, they're linking their their identity to their job and their and their you know their their title and their salary. Um, I think the more companies that can help guys understand, you know, just because you've got all the trappings, it doesn't mean that that should, you should expect that you're sorted in life. 
and, and it comes down to how you're feeling. Um, I know with um, like Instagram, I think there's about 1.2 million followers, which is a, you know, a hu huge following. How do you see the responsibility of the messages that are put out, especially with the articles that are written to, to help guys? Because it's such a big thing at the moment where, um, you know, if guys are at home, I think they're probably going to be consuming more content than they were before because they're, you know, they're at home. They're not having the commute. And I just wonder for yourself, seeing as you're you know, the editor of it, where do you stand on trying to, um, you know, put out the right messages and, and who decides what the right message is? Well, it's really, it's really all about the mix. I mean, when we were in the depths of lockdown, we, we pivoted totally away from any sort of commercial message. It wasn't appropriate. It, it wasn't what we wanted to do at the time. And it really was all about um, content to sort of inspire, to help, to offer some potential solutions. And we're, we're not saying, we're not claiming that we have the answers for everything with Health yeah. and Mind. But we are responding to the fact that this is now part of the conversation for men. You know, a lot of the stigma has been, a lot of the stigma, thankfully, has been removed from talking about mental health. But we've still got a long way to go. And you're right to say that COVID has had a huge impact on, you know, the triggers around mental health. We work with Movember on the fundraising aspect of Health in Mind. And obviously, Movember have done a lot of work in raising awareness and raising funds um, to deliver support programs and you know around men leading healthier happier lives and you know we we use a lot of their research and data to be able to inform what we're doing content wise and to your point you know it's really about the mix you know if we yeah. if we were just putting out content saying buy this buy this buy this buy this then people would very quickly become tired of it and that's never been what mr port has uh, been about it has been you know, a portal around men's lifestyle. And, you know, in the world that we're living in, in the time that we're living in, you know, mental health for men has never been more important. I mean, some of the statistics that um, Movember have uh, shared with us recently are, you know, really frightening. And these are going to be the backbone of what we're going to put out during our Health in Mind week, which is the 4th to the 10th of October this year, which marks the first anniversary of our first fundraising initiative with health in mind but it also the 10th of october marks world mental health day yeah so we're doing a full week of content on the site special content around um the central pillars of health in mind and when you really boil it down um it's about men communicating with each other and it's really about you know a lot of what you discuss on your podcast with other guests is about you know men talking to each other and about friendship you know that that how important friendship is and what what friendship can mean mm. um to guys who are struggling and what friendship can mean in terms of combating you know the negative repercussions of isolation which you know i think the thing with the thing with mental health is you can be in close proximity to people but you can still be feeling very isolated yeah and that uh, that's an issue you know that's very prevalent in men's mental health as as you all know um, and I think that the, the stats that, that we're working with um, in terms of articulating through a very different approach to our social output and a very different approach to our, our normal content mix for that week of the 4th to the 10th of October will all revolve around a hashtag time with him. Mm -hmm. And what we're encouraging people to do is, you know, and we will put this message out, out on social unapologetically, but we're going to ask people to stop scrolling and to pick up the phone and to call a friend and to make, you know, to make that first contact, to have that conversation. And then we'll support that message with all sorts of strategies about how best to have a conversation with a friend you might think could be struggling. And, you know, a lot of men are struggling at the moment. And, you know, just one of the stats is like 50% of men will never be asked whether they're having a hard time. And, you know, a lot of men are having a hard time at the moment. And men traditionally put a brave face on things and don't necessarily want to talk about it. So we want to be part of that conversation to change attitudes and to, to give people strategies, especially at a time when we are all further away from each other. We can't see our friends. You know, we're talking now, but, yeah. you know, we were talking about Zoom fatigue. We don't have eye contact. You know, we don't have, because we're not in the same room, those sort of physical cues and that the sort of physical nourishment of face-to-face -face conversation and this is a, a reality of the time we're living in but it is is something that you know like worries about job um worries about money worries about relationships stress and anxiety all these things 
are, you know, further exacerbate poor mental health. Yeah. And um, we, as you know, and the, you know, the great job you're doing with the Whole Man Academy and, and your guests talk about every week is about really finding ways to, to break through that and finding strategies to cope with it. Well, you mentioned a really in- interesting point there, and I, I, I smiled because you said about, you know, time for him and, and encouraging people to stop scrolling. We did that a couple of weeks ago where I said, instead of me writing a long e-letter, which I write every week to hopefully help men just think a bit more about something that's important to them, I actually wrote a short one and said, look, whatever the time was you'd have spent reading my e-letter, how about you just message three of your mates? And, you know, and, and call them, don't just WhatsApp them <laughs> or Instagram message them or whatever you want. Just give them a call maybe and just have a chat to them and, and see what comes up. And I got more response from that than I think uh, up to that point than any of my messages saying, do you know what? I, I called a mate who I've been meaning to call for fill in the blank number of whatever. And it was so good to have a chat. And now we've arranged to have a beer and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, that's, exact, that's exactly what you're saying. And yep. it's great to hear that, that you got such, um, you know, pick up and such engagement with that. Because that's really what we're trying to say at the moment is, you know, it's really difficult. In a perfect world, we'd be meeting up in the pub or we'd be doing the things that the, you know, the normal fabric of men's friendship, you know, we would be enjoying that. But, um, you know, things are much more difficult now. But just just stopping, you know, and doing something, you know, going a bit further, stop scrolling, don't just, like you say, send a text or a WhatsApp or, you know, just something that's quick and easy. You know, yeah. how difficult is it to pick up the phone and just have a chat with somebody? I mean, it makes so much difference. And actually during lockdown, um, you know, I think that my circle of friends were pretty good. Some were better than others. And, you know, those that phoned in to check, you know, to check in, um, you know, that was really appreciated because I think like everybody, you know, at times it felt like, we, I think we all felt like we were fraying and it was just, it was such such an existential angst and anxiety about the whole situation. I mean, you know, the world felt like it was ending and we were in the middle of it trying to sort of maintain a veneer of, of normality for our kids, for our families, for, you know, within our jobs, which we were all trying to, you know, maintain and continue and, you know, it's been a really hard time. And I think that men have got to, you know, we did a really powerful story a few weeks ago, our first major fundraising capsule collection for Health in Mind, which we partnered with Rafa, the brilliant cycling brand. And we told uh, an amazing story of a guy called Leon Cerrone, who um, was a model for Rafa, a keen cyclist, works on Savile Row, very popular, gregarious guy, but had had issues with his mental health. And Leon told us in a really sort of searingly honest interview about his issues with mental health and about his, you know, the attempts he'd made on his own life. Um, And it was extraordinary, extraordinarily powerful to hear him talk about how friendships with people and his friends pulled him through and pulled him out of that. We had an amazing response from that. We sold an absolute ton of these special, specially made, exclusive Rafa Health in Mind cycling shirts, and the wow. profits from that, you know, all go to the fund, which was fantastic. So, you know, we're trying to we're trying to offer advice. We're trying to sort of be a sort of concierge service, if you like, for our readers, putting them in touch with experts, but also telling the stories of real guys like Leon and others um, about you know, not only the hardships they face, but, you know, also really about what friendship means to them. Because, you know, it, it, friendship is a, is just so, so important at the moment. Yeah, and there's two points there. I think it's um, one of the things you said about, you know, giving guys tips and advice, and it's not necessarily telling them what to do, but giving them an options list. You know, guy, guys don't like to be told what to do, full stop. Um, so I remember back when David Gandhi spoke at our event at Geese and Hawks, you know, down, down Savile Row, it was a brilliant evening. It was our biggest event where we had 65 guys in the room. And one of the things he said, which stood out for a lot of people is, you know, my advice is give you time, sorry, give yourself time off of social media. Um, and that for a lot of guys, I think at the moment, especially in lockdown, meant they were driven onto social media because a lot of them were kind of, a bit bored and it's so easy to sit and scroll and look at what everybody else has got and what they're doing and and compare yourself to them. So you you get that weekly usage thing at the end of the week and it's just (sighs) terrifying. isn't it? You're thinking, God, that's time I'm never going to get back. But I think you're right. I mean, we're going to use, you know, our social media output will be very, very different. 
uh, during this week. Um, you know, we've got 1.2 million followers on Instagram, and those followers will see a very different approach. We're going to be putting out very text and stats-based messages that will be very shareable, and we hope our community, um, you know, share these messages. And, we, and these messages about friendship, about um, isolation, about you know the, the impact of COVID on on men's mental health, and why you know men reaching out going further than just sort of putting a like on a post or or a quick comment or an inst you know a, a, um, a you know a quick message or a text just yeah. you know pick up the phone pick up the phone have a chat with somebody you haven't spoken to for a while and you know we'll also be talking about how to have conversations that might be difficult um with people i mean you know movember have a an interesting uh, thing called alec a-l-e-c which is ask listen encourage and check in you know so we're going to be unpacking a lot of these sort of strategies whereby you know if you haven't spoken to somebody for a while if you're if you're worried that one of your friends maybe is is suffering or having a hard time or their mental health is deteriorating how to have those conversations how to be a good friend that's one of the stories mm -hmm. we're going to be doing is um you know which is going to be coming this week is 33 ways to be to be a be better friend you know use drawing on the expertise of all sorts of of experts in the field but i think it's just it's just more important than ever that that men speak to each other and are available to each other and and listen as yeah. well as ask them so you just said that the word there i know we we're often quite big on saying you know some people either don't want to listen it might sound harsh but they're busy with their own life busy being busy or they don't know what to say and they feel awkward and therefore they're not the one you need to talk to so it's about selecting you know who you're going to talk to and i even said in my um you know it's the same once you do well even just to go and talk to a lamppost <laughs> because <laughs> you know you'd you're just getting off your chest whatever's going on and you're not necessarily looking for a solution to that issue it's like i'm just letting you know that this has been quite challenging for me. That's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like a valve, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, it's a valve. You know, you need sometimes when things build up, you know, just being able to speak about it. And often, you know, you might not want to speak to, about it to your partner because you're thinking, God, it just sounds like I'm moaning all the time or I'm grumbling about this or that or the other, especially if you live with me. Um, <laughs> uh, as my wife will almost certainly um, testify. Um, but, you know, it's, it's just important to be able to, to, to talk about it. I mean, I can't yeah. underestimate how much of a release valve that can be. And sometimes to speak to somebody about it that you haven't, you don't feel like you've spoken about these things um, with before can be better than somebody where you think like, oh God, I don't want to bore these people with it. Or, but I like you say, a lot of it is really about how the person who's listening or hearing what, you know, the friend is saying, how they can help to bring it out to them, you know, yeah. because it is important to get it out. Um, and I think that we're going to be off, well, we, I know that we're going to be offering um, tips and strategies on that. And we, we really just want to try and, you know, in this special week um, of content and social activity for us to, to model some of the behavior and to shine a light on some of the issues um, and to, you know, to be part of the conversation. We're not going to fix anything. But if we can get people thinking in the right way and we can get people moving in the right direction, then, you know, we're going to be happy with that. That's, it. That's such an important point is, as you said, you're not trying to necessarily fix something, but it's about, I would say, trying to give people a nudge to, you know, maybe think slightly differently. Um, and, you know, we, we talk a lot about mindset. I think it's one of those things with um, what I've noticed, I mean, I had a nigh on 20 year career work in the city. So I worked at some of the really big, big companies, but back then there was nothing about employee wellness, which sounds a bit of a um, wanky term for some people, but you know, the, the employee and their experience of work is so important because if they're feeling happy, then hopefully they're going to be a good employee and they're going to be more productive. And the bottom line is that the company is there to make money. And if you can keep everybody as, as happy as you can, so I just wondered for you, with not necessarily just the guys in the company, but for, for all the staff, what does Mr. Porter do for the like internal wellness of the of the staff? Well, there's there's a number of things. They, you know, we've we've got um, subscriptions to Headspace, which is good. I mean, I did a, a long stint with Headspace, and I've tried Calm, and I need to go back to them. I need to sort of get my my routine back in shape. That's one thing. Um, 
you know, even before COVID, we were able to work two days a week from home, which gives a sort of a, a better sort of balance, I think, yeah. between the office life and home life. There is, um, you know, online yoga lessons, um, should you want to do them. I think I did, wouldn't think I'd probably subject my, my yoga practice to the rest of the staff. <laughs> Might be something I'll keep to the kitchen floor at home, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, certainly there are lots of things in place. And I think the company is good at... Um, at recognizing that that mental health is is really important for a happy and productive and um, you know workforce, which obviously is vital to the company's well-being. I, I'm certainly, I think that's so important that people people listening and and most of them are going to be professional. I mean, 75% of the people that are listening are, are guys, but you know you you've got a lot of guys that are working for big companies and I have them contacting me. It's funny, either via LinkedIn or email or Instagram, or <laughs> you can pick all the yeah. guys often saying, we don't really do much for the guys in the company. We might do something generally, but the guys, when they do do something, it's 90% attendance women. Mm. So how can we get it where the guys feel comfortable coming along to something? It doesn't feel a bit, I don't know, airy fairy and can, can come along. And I've spoken at, you know, Lloyd's Bank, uh, Barclays, uh, various other places. And, you know, sometimes they're like, do we, are we going to get um, a bit of flack for having a men only uh, thing, <laughs> you know, a, 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 an event? Yeah. Like, yeah. You do what you want, you know, but it's about if you can put the message across and it's the environment it is. So if you need to just say to guys, Joe, you know it's a, it's a, it's a thing for all the guys to get together there shouldn't be a problem with a company doing that in my and, and several people. No, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I think that, you know, you only have to look at the, again, look at the statistics, you know, every minute around the world, a man takes his own life. You know, the, the statistics I was listening to, was it Jamie you had on last week? Yeah. Um, talking about, you know, the, the UK statistics on male suicide are sort of going through the roof at the moment. I mean, yeah, I think that this is a really, it's a really, really big issue, certainly for men of a certain age, you know, from probably mid twenties now, and that, that, that bracket is going through to well into the forties. Um, you know, it's a, it's a suicide is a, is a, is a, is a huge risk, um, for, for men in that age bracket. So I think that, you know, recognizing, um, the issues that men face. I mean, this isn't in any way, shape or form to downplay the issues that women or anybody else faces. You know, it's just that, you know, I think that men traditionally have not been good at talking or opening up or sharing or yeah. um, willing to, to, to talk or be listened to. So it's about providing environments where men can talk. Because I, I really believe in, in you know, being able to talk about stuff, whether it's in talking therapy or whether it's, um, you know, whether it's uh, at a, a, a sort of a retreat or whatever you want to do, you know, just being able to talk about stuff openly um, is a big, a big, big thing. I mean, I, I, I find, you know, playing football on a Monday night, uh, six side football on a Monday evening, then we go to, a, to the pub for a couple of pints and literally by halfway through pint one, a group of guys in their 40s and above are talking about all sorts of stuff. And it's yeah. not so much a therapy session, but it's just everybody gets a lot out of it because, yes, we can talk about football. Yes, we can talk about who had a good game, you know, in, the, in that evening's game. Yes, we can talk about music, you know, television, politics, and we frequently do. But yeah. we also got to talk about to, talk to each other about how we're feeling. You know, it's not, it's not sort of massively touchy-feely. It's not like a... <laughs> therapy session that you'd be pleased to know um but it is i think everybody who who is part of that social circle around our monday night football gets something out of it and yeah. you know during yeah. lockdown i really missed it i missed it at the end of last year when i had sort of back problems and then you know problems with my health you know on the back of ironically enough doing a story for mr porter on wellness apps you know i was <laughs> i got to the, the fittest and strongest and and healthiest that I felt in years and then my physical health fell off a cliff and that that had a all sorts of ramifications for how I felt mentally and you know it was it was frightening and it was sudden and it was something I'd never experienced before um, and in addition to all those things not being able to play football not having that sort of support network you know just just that ability to chat and talk and get stuff off your chest um, 
I don't you know think I mean? people realise the value of it until they've lost it. Yeah, you don't know what you've got until it's gone, you know, and that's, was, that's absolutely right. It was, um, it was a, a mutual friend of ours, Robin Swithenbank, who's part of the, the Whole Man Academy team, much, much uh, valued. And I know soon after lockdown, he said he went out, or I think he had, it was either to the pub or to, you know, just friends over in the garden to sit and have a few drinks and said, you know, even if you're, uh, might not be the phrase he used, but it's a technical term, even if you're just talking a load of bollocks with your mates, it's just great to have that, you know, a, a release of talking a nonsense, be it, be it politics, be it talking about football, anything. And, and that's what I see over the four months of lockdown. And then a lot of guys working from home that for me, I, I lived, I worked in central London, but I didn't live in central London. So you wouldn't go and meet your friends, your colleagues for a beer if you weren't in London because you all yeah. lived surrounding. So the, the focal point was you're at work and now you have the social aspect. But, you know, we had a guy that works in construction. He said, I'm on the admin side. So I basically am not on the building side. So I'm used to having, you know, a load of guys all day banter, talk, talking sport and et cetera, et cetera. I've been at home for four or five months and I just miss getting out and, and having that interaction. Um, yeah, well, talk, talking bollocks is what we do as men, isn't it? Yeah, really? I mean, stick with um, what we're good I'm at. Yeah, we're really good at it, and some, some better than others. Um, but yeah, no, I, it's really important. And I think, you know, within the, the, the sort of, you know, and I, I wrote in that piece that actually the Monday night, the, the piece I wrote for Mr. Porter about, um, you know, starting out with the wellness apps and, and actually I was walking to and from work every day, which is about 12 and a half miles. I was meditating, I was doing asana yoga, I was eating healthfully I felt you know I just felt great and then suddenly had this problem with my kidney and then you know was in and out of hospital and it was just like I'd never had anything like it yeah. um, but I think that you know it's interesting isn't it you're, you're sort of you people often separate their physical and mental health and the two are you know so closely um, interconnected yeah. When you're not exercising, you sort of feel slovenly and you feel sort of down on yourself. I mean, I, I know that I need to do more, but, you know, I'm worried about Monday Night Football now, you know, finishing yeah. just after it started again, you know, and then yeah. what am I going to do? Um, you know, I was running with a with a neighbour and, you know, all, all those sorts of things. And then when it's taken away from you, it's tough. But I think even within the sort of the talking bollocks with your mates, which is really important because laughter, as much as anything, is is as is, is, is good a therapy you know, yeah. for so many of the world's ills. And, you know, if, if your mates can't make you laugh, then, you know, <laughs> they're the wrong mates. Well, um, well let's, but, let's talk about football, because I was going to come on to this, and not necessarily, we're not going to go through what what's your greatest Liverpool eleven or anything like that, although we could do. We can. That's one of the important things, is either for guys like me who don't get to go to the game, but I, you know, at the weekend, you got to shout at the TV, and it gave you that, you know, kind of, you switch your brain off and watch the match. And we could apply this to any sport. It doesn't matter whether it's if you don't like football and listening. But I've got then like my father-in-law, who was a lifelong Spurs fan, who goes pretty much every week, meets his mates, has a pint, um, has a gluten-free sausage roll. And, you know, he gets to shout at the referee and shout at the other players and maybe shout at Jose Mourinho, rightly so. And that was all taken away from you. And the big question then is for a lot of guys, what do you do for fun? Because they built yeah, their weekends around their sport and they're, you know, either playing it, watching it, talking about it. Yeah, it's, it's really tough. I mean, um, you know, Liverpool won the league after a 30-year wait. I remember the last time in, in 1990, clearly. I uh, didn't think it was going to be 30 years, but still haven't been able to celebrate it properly, you know. Um, you saw the scenes after they won the, the Champions League, you know, in Liverpool. It was, it was just off the charts. Is it 750,000 uh, roughly? Yeah, yeah. I mean, after, you know, after 30 years of wait, you could, you could almost guarantee there'd probably be, you know, one and a half million on the streets of Liverpool. But yeah, it's really difficult. It's, you know, it's, there is, there's something, there's such a big community around sport, isn't there? And it's, there's not only watching it, but, but playing it and all the sort of the ritual and the culture of it that is taken away. And that, that sort of ritual and culture is some of the stuff that, that binds life together, isn't it? And without that, it's tough. And I think that, I think, you know, going back to some of the things that we've talked about already, but, you know, we talked about lockdown. And I think during lockdown, a lot of men were in contact with each other. There were Zoom quizzes or 
or you know house party get-togethers or you know people you know there was, I mean every Sunday we had a quiz me and my mates who I've known since going to school with them you know we had a quiz on the 80s and it just got more and more and more um, you know sort of random and uh, ridiculous but it was very funny and then you know as lockdown eased that's those sorts of again those bits of social glue have come away and it feels in a way that people are again even though life is more normal than it was, it almost feels like we're more isolated again than we were during lockdown when everybody through necessity was reaching out to each other more. I mean, I remember when, when we arrived in Cornwall thinking like, oh my God, what are we going to do? What's going on with the world? Maybe I should just go through the phone book in my phone. I just phone everybody. You know, at some point I didn't do it, but I thought it was a, sort of a, a, a noble aim because what else is there going to be to do? As it turned out, there was a lot of work to do, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I didn't, didn't get a break. What was it like working from home with the kids then? And I say this because, you know, some of the people I know at the moment are saying, oh, I'd like to work from home all the time. And I say, and I'm really saying, be very, very careful that if a huge number of people say that they don't understand the long-term effects of, for those guys that are working from home and you've got kids maybe there, it's quite hard to detach her from it because not all of us have got, a, you know, a, a, an office space that's outside away from the house. So you've got the, the noise of it. So I'm guessing you were in that quite small. So what was it like for you when you're trying to concentrate and have Zoom calls and you've got kids, kids can't be caught at any age, unfortunately. Yeah, no, it was, it was easier in Cornwall. My mum and dad, I was able to sort of go up to where my mum and dad live and sort of hide somewhere there. And then, um, you know, and also I had a view over the sea, which was sort of, by the end, I had a view over the sea, which was just fantastic. And, and I, I miss being able to look at the sea. And I used, you know, I used to go down and sit by the sea as, you know, for half an hour between work and then going back into family life. And that was an amazing sort of um, moment to uh, just sort of unwind and take a breath and, yeah. you know, exhale, which was really important. Because like it was, as we discussed, it was, it's really hardcore during lockdown. I mean, starting a new job, you know, even just doing a job, whether you've been there for years or, or whatever, that was really hard. Um, I found it, I mean, this week, uh, actually last week, you know, kids are back at school, picking up coughs and colds. Nobody's quite sure what they're meant to be doing, scrabbling around to get tested, kids at home, you know, and I don't have any space where we live at home. You know, I don't have an office space. So I'm sitting yeah. at the kitchen table with our two-year-old wondering why I'm there and why I've got headphones in and why I'm talking to the laptop and not playing Lego with him. Um, you know, I'd love to be playing Lego with him, but it's, it's tough. And I think, I, think, I think the good thing is that kids are incredibly adaptable. I worried about our kids, but actually, you know, I should have been more worried about us really than the kids because kids, you know, they tend to... You put them in a situation and they adapt. That's one of the amazing sort of, um, you know, sort of rubber ball quality of ch the children have. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it is, it is really difficult. Um, I mean, that's why it's been great. I live close to the office, so I'm able to walk into work, which is nice to have that, you know, headspace, that walking time in the morning to be, not to be on a bus or a tube. Um, and also to be able to have some interaction with my colleagues. That's made a big a big big difference um yeah. to my to my mental health i think no it's that's it it's that it's adding in interaction i think we we've, we've all found you know i can pretty much speak for most of the guys that either are, are um, interacting with the whole man academy is that what they missed was though you know the, the interactions either with their mates or just going out and seeing other people and not being just stuck at home you know it doesn't matter what what great house you've got you, you sometimes we all need a bit of a bit of a change of scenery um, I think no, also, yeah, sorry, also just being by the yeah. sea, the difference in a small village by the sea and then coming back to London where everybody's in masks, you know, and, you know, people were in masks in, in the village in Cornwall, but there aren't as many people, obviously. And yeah. there's something actually, I think, still quite jarring about the sight of so many people in masks. Obviously, we all understand why it has to happen and we, nobody is disputing that or, or arguing against it. But actually, the visual impact of just seeing so many people in in masks is like something a bunch of zombies we're, yeah we're still i think we're all still coming to terms with that i think it's one of those you know it, it all these things have a little incremental impacts i think and you know just the visual the visual cues that we're living in a in an age of, of a pandemic are, are not to be underestimated no it's it's very strange and i um uh, when i was in london a couple of weeks ago and it was just weird walking along 
and you know you just see loads of people it just i'm always one of these people that i smile and say hello to people if i'm out for a for a walk and stuff like that yeah. and, and that might be the only person they've had a smile from that day but you try and smile at someone when it's just some eyes it's it's a different thing altogether and also during the beginning bit of lockdown i mean we we literally didn't go out of my mom and dad's house in their garden for six weeks i mean we were very very respectful we were in a small village in cornwall um you know where they've lived for 20 years and you know we visited many 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 times and know very well but you know when we when we finally came out having quarantined and isolated and and, and you know followed um the letter you know to the to the last i and dotted t and all that sort of stuff actually when people started to sort of shy away from you because you were too close or you know they start to cross the road to get away from you i mean there's got to be some collateral damage i think from yeah. those sorts of altered interactions between people because we are a, a social species and and we're being you know this pandemic is i think is almost a sort of perfect pandemic for the digital age in the sense that you know maybe we have all been far too but we have definitely become far too obsessed and dependent on the device in our hands and we look down more than we look up and around yeah and now totally this, is, agree. this has been a pandemic that has sort of you know put its fingers on the on the weak spots in our interactions with each other and it's and it's pressed yeah and now we're sort of reliant on you know technology whether it's zoom or whether it's webex or whether it's facetime or whatever to have contact with people and we're starting to realize that how much we miss real content i said this on our zoom call the other night we have to be very careful that we don't get pushed to become a contactless society and I mean, yeah. you know, yes, we're all used to tapping on things, but you know, what does what does the psychological messages that we're getting from Boris at the moment say? It's it's stay away from everybody because everybody's dangerous. Um, yeah, don't, which, don't get me started on the government. But yeah, um, <laughs> it's another podcast. We've yeah, got a couple. Of, we could do a series or a season. Yeah, we could do Liverpool. We could do uh, the government. There's yeah. a few others we could probably we probably shoehorn in there. But yeah. I agree about the physical aspect of it. You know shaking hands, giving somebody a hug, giving hug. somebody a kiss, you know, just sort of patting somebody on the back, you know, you know, not invading somebody's space, but just having a sort of, you know, being able to physically um, articulate your affection or feelings or whatever, you know, obviously, you know, within boundaries or that, but just those simple interactions like shaking hands or, yeah. you know, giving somebody a hug that you, that you love or you miss or you're fond of or whatever. Um, you know, not being able to do that is is hard. I mean, you know, when we were down in Cornwall, my mum and dad, we had to isolate from my my parents because my, you know, they're of a certain age, and my dad sort of, you know, with his underlying health issues, is in the crosshairs of of the pandemic. But that was really hard for my kids and my parents, you know, because they're so used to, yeah. you know, having my kids, you know, hugging them and kissing them and having them all over them and all that sort of stuff. And that was a hard thing. And actually that was really rammed home or really underlined the fact that, um, you know, this, this pandemic and this, this time we're living through is really pressing on so many weak spots, you know, in, in us and in society. And we've got to be really wary of it, which is why I hope that, you know, what we're doing around time with him, um, you know, look out for the hashtag, you know, this week uh, on Mr. Porter and hopefully, you know, through all our networks and friends are going to spread the word, but yeah, you know, and and our content, you know, on the website, on social, you know, what we're saying about this, we just want to be part of the conversation. We want to, we want to, um, you know, offer some advice and put people in front of people who know what they're talking about, and and just really, you know, message the fact that friendship is more important than ever, and, yeah. and particularly between men. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not to be underestimated. I think that's the thing at the moment. It's, um, and, and that's why Mr. Porter is obviously doing it well, is realizing that there's so much that makes up a man. And in the next six months, year down the line, I foresee so many, um, other topics that, you know, a year ago, we'd have never spoken about this stuff of, you know, keeping away from people and how that's going to affect you and your children, maybe in your friends psychologically. So I think there's there's so much to write about and talk about that it's yeah. the perfect timing to be focusing some resources on this because it's, it's going to be much. Needed. Yeah. And we've, you know, we've been doing this for a year now. It's not something we've come to, you know, just through COVID, you know, if you, if people go on to Mr. Porter or look up Mr. Porter health in mind, 
you know, they'll see all the content that we've published over the last year. And it's, it's really varied, you know, it ranges from, you know, um, exploring the issues around new fatherhood. It looks at sort of, you know, more broader issues like kindness. It's like dealing with failure, racism, all sorts of, you know, issues that are very pertinent at particular times or that just are, you know, things that men have to contend with. Um, and now, you know, since we've done the, the capsule with Rafa, we're bringing in a, a much more sort of a first person sort of memoir style um, yeah. strand to that content to really show that, you know, obviously guys all over the world are dealing with this. And, um, you know, but men are capable. You know, that's the other thing. You know, we are capable and we can take steps. And we're, we're more than capable of taking the steps to sort of combat this and to create the right conditions for better mental health. And then hopefully, you know, if we can do that, which is what Movember advocates, sort of working upstream from the issues, if we can put the, you know, the right behaviours and the right conditions in place, then we might be able to collectively do something about, you know, the really alarming statistics we see on suicide, male suicide. Yeah, no, definitely. It's a, it's a long term, when I say fight, it's not a fight, it's a long term challenge, I think. And so it's great yeah. that companies, you know, little ones like the Whole Man Academy, but the, the huge ones as well are all hopefully moving, uh, you know, with the same message of, it's not just about how you look, uh, it's about everything else that, that, yeah, that kind of goes into it. And it's and also that it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. You know, that's that's really important. That was the really sort of salient point that came out of Leon Cerrone's film. And I would urge people to to look at that on Mr. Porter. Um, mm. uh, it was part of our, our Mr. Porter Times Rafa Health in Mind um, uh, initiative and, and capsule. But it was incredibly powerful. And he was, you know, as I said, searingly honest about what he'd been through. But it is this idea that it's it's okay not to be okay, you know, yeah. and um, it's okay to, you know, I just find it so, um, you know, so stark that, you know, one in two men, 50% of men have never been asked whether they're having a hard time. And, you know, I think there was another great stats. It's like 70% of men say their friends can rely on them, but only 48% say that they rely on their friends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, which is um, which is sort of extraordinary. Yeah, no, it's it's slowly the the, 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 the what, that's all right. The world is waking up to uh, understanding, as you say, that it's okay not to be okay, and and there are there are other, other people that are you know happily listen, um, and the companies around us are looking to to support men as well. Now I know um, time is uh, to running out, as you've got uh, probably about a million meetings today, um, and I've got a first birthday party to attend to. Um, you, you, but, yours is more important than mine, so enjoy your first, well, it, not it's, your first birthday party, but your No, uh, it's, it's got cake involved, so what can I, how, how can I complain about that? Um, but first, I encourage the guys, obviously, to go, especially onto Instagram and Mr. Porter and onto the website, have a look. We'll put a, all the links in the show notes. Um, Thank you. I appreciate your time. Um, I, I would like to invite you back on the podcast at, at another time and we'll talk about uh, a, a few other uh, bits, which I'm pretty sure we can fill in, if you don't that mind. Great. Thank, thank you so much for having, having me on. And, um, you know, I really love what you're doing. And I think, you know, a lot of what your guests are saying, it's, it's, it's really valuable and important stuff. So um, thanks very much for having me on. Good. Your, uh, your kind words are always appreciated. Um, and for anybody, if you've enjoyed the podcast and like more support, um, and want to hear more about the Whole Man Academy, you can go onto our website or you can email me, anthony at wholemanacademy.com. Uh, go on and subscribe to our e-letter because like Mr. Porter, we're trying to put out um, thought-provoking uh, e-letters once a week at least um, just to help men do life better. Head on and subscribe. There's the uh, Do Life Better exercise, which helps you get thinking about what you're doing in life. Uh, and soon we're launching our Whole Man Academy mastermind, uh, generally for men who are successful but are bored and want a bit more adventure. Um, which especially in the last six months we all need a bit more adventure um so dan i appreciate your uh, your time sir um and uh, and we will speak to you very soon cheers anthony nice speaking to you thank you mate